Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at ingress on Kubernetes. Today we're going to be looking at ingress controllers on Kubernetes, and the Kubernetes ingress controllers are controlled by the kube proxy, which is a component inside of Kubernetes that's responsible for doing things like network load balancing and a network proxy that runs in each node. But when we configure this guy, it will act as a transparent proxy across all the nodes whenever we configure the ingress controller or the services as we've already seen. When we talk about ingress on Kubernetes, we start with the pod, which is our basic unit for building out things on Kubernetes. And within a context of a pod, you might have one or more containers running in that pod. Now, a pod is going to be part of some kind of deployment, and that deployment could be a deployment or a replica set or a stateful set or something like that. And you might have multiple deployments, stateful sets, whatever, running on your Kubernetes cluster. Now, each one of these is going to be exposed by a service, which acts as a load balancer for distributing the load across the pods in a given replica set deployment, whatever it might be. And each deployment is going to have a different service to expose that load. Now, to get a single point of entry for an application, say for an application that is determined by multiple deployments, multiple replica sets, or multiple states, we will have an ingress controller that allows us to define routes that will route traffic to one of those services, depending on what it is. And this allows me to basically have a single point of entry for my application and then based on routes, have multiple services running behind the scenes that build that application out. So one service that might be defined by a given deployment and that service is actually a set of pods that could be my data access layer and another access layer might have a different set of services exposing some other kind of data and the routes are really what determine what that is and this architecture would be very useful for things like microservices or websites that have multiple components or something along those lines for our demo today, I want to look at the architecture that we just looked at on the previous slide implemented using a Kubernetes manifest file. So this manifest file is a YAML file that has a deployment a service and an ingress defined in it. I'm going to look at it in that order. And we already looked at services and controllers in depth uh, last time, and you can find a link to that video in the description below. So what we start with here, though, is a deployment configuration. And we've seen something like this already, where we have a deployment controller defined, and we're going to have three replicas of a given pod that is defined by this template here. And the pod has a container spec right here that is going to be using an image from Docker Hub called Blaze AKS Demo. And this is basically a node app that just gives me back information about the actual controller, the actual container itself, like the name and some of the platform specifics and so on. So once I have this defined, I can then expose this through a service, and we've seen this already as well. We have a service defined here that is going to be mapping port 80 to target port 3000, which is exposed on the deployment. And I'm using a type of cluster IP, which is an internally load balanced IP address. Now up here is really the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about today, and that is ingress. Now ingress is defined as the kind up here, and some metadata that I need to add to this determines what I'm going to have available uh, to my controller for defining various things that are coming into this controller. And I want to turn on HTTP based routing here inside of my annotation. So that tells the ingress controller to say, uh, use HTTP based routing, and that's going to be defined in some of the rules down below. I'm not using SSL redirection. So I have that turned off through this annotation. And I'm doing some URL rewrites, which you can do inside of ingress controllers as well. And this is gives you the ability to do things like regex rewrites and some other rules that you can define for defining that some of the and refining some of the kinds of URLs that come into your controller. And once I have everything defined as such, I, I want to target to do a target rewrite such as a slash that will kind of normalize everything. I can then define some rules here that will actually do some routing for me. 
And each one of these rules is going to be defining a route and then routing it back to a service port in the back end. So when we look at the, just the generic slash, that's everything after the host name, then I'm going to route that to node app one. Uh, I, I can also do a similar route to slash app one and also redirect that to node app one here. And that goes back to the service that's defined on port 80 as we saw below. Now, we didn't look at these in the code, but I also have some services that are defined for node app two down here. So if it comes in as slash app two, I'm going to route that back to app to node app two and then on port 80. And then I have lastly another route called keen and I'm gonna route that back to my commander keen uh, service and then expose my commander keen pod through this particular route. So that's what I'm gonna be doing as a demo today. So let's go ahead and deploy this into a Kubernetes cluster and then we can go and test all these routes to see if they actually work. I'm now here in my command prompt and I already have connected my kube control up to an AKS cluster on Azure and I created that and there is a link in the description below on how to create an AKS cluster and how to connect a client to that cluster. So once I have the cluster connected, I can run a simple kube command to create this given application really set of services and deployments and then my ingress controller i'm going to use apply or i could use create and i'm going to do dash f and i'm going to specify the file that is the manifest file that we just looked at and so let's go ahead and run this and it will create all of the deployments as well as the services and ingress for my in my deployment here that I have for my application. So let's go ahead and look at some of these resources using kube control. I can use kube ttl get pods and that will show me the list of pods that are running. And uh, because I have two uh, replica sets or two deployments really that have three replicas in each of these, that's what I'm seeing here for these node app pods. And then I have a single deployment that is using my commander keen pod. And so I have a total of seven uh, controller, seven containers and seven different pods. So if I do a get services, I can see the services that are exposed. And these are all exposed on my internal load balancer. So I'm using a cluster IP address. So uh, my Kubernetes controller. This is for the actual commanding of the actual cluster. This uh, one right here is for accessing my commander keen deployment. And this is the load balancers for my different node apps. And then I can also run get ingress as we've seen already. And that will give me the HTTP endpoint for this particular ingress, which is this address here. So that's something I can take into a browser. So let me get a new browser window here and pull that over here. And then I can run this IP address and I can do slash app one, and that will give me my first node application. So node app right here, that's running that node.js application. And I can hit F5 on and refresh my browser. You can see that it's being load balanced to different pods. Similarly, if I just do that base route that I have no nothing after the slash, I'm getting the exact same results on node app one. That's because I define the route as such. Now, if I do app two, uh, we should be able to see app two pull up and there's app two. And if I refresh that, we can see that it's load balancing between app two uh, pods that are running inside of that deployment. And then also for commander keen, just for good measure. And then here you can see that I have commander keen up here. That's the, the folder. So if I go keen slash VNC, uh, you, you can see here that I have my VNC client running in a browser, and then I can then pull up my Commander Keen um, container that is running my game inside of a browser context. And we can then do the the the, the same old thing that I've uh, already done in uh, previous uh, demos where I have uh, my Keen directory, and then I can run install on this, install Commander Keen on this now 30-year-old game, and then once this is done, I can then 
run keen one and this will actually load up my commander keen game so this is actually all being done through websockets the streaming back to my desktop here so even the ingress controller can do things like websockets and some of those advanced http features that you might not be able to do with some uh, more primitive proxies it's really all based on nginx anyway so anything you can configure with nginx you could reasonably do with uh, the nginx a controller that is really the ingress controller on top of the Kubernetes cluster that is defined by something like Azure or any other of the other control any of the other uh, Kubernetes services that are out there such as the ones on top of Google Compute or even the ones on top of Google Amazon's EKS service or even on premise if you want to use that so all in all this is just a Fun little demo that I've used before and we've seen the other demo as well. So next time we're going to be looking at storage on Kubernetes and how to use different storage drivers to access data on Azure such as file services and blob storage as well as things like drives and we'll look at demos on how to do all of that. So until next time, thanks for watching Tech on Fire with Blob. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.